Abandoned buildings will always hold a special fascination for us. They're the buildings and locations that were once teeming with life, but now stand empty as the world moves on and forgets all about them. We haven't forgotten them, though. We've gone looking for them, and we've put some of the most awesome examples together for you right here in this video. The Japanese word for ruins is haikyo, and there are many striking haikyo sites to explore in the Far Eastern country. One of the most striking is an abandoned volcano museum that sits on the slopes of Mount Asama. It was a strange place to build a museum in the first place. Mount Asama is still very much an active volcano. Interestingly, the Japanese have built a museum here not just once, but twice. The new one was built right next door to the old one. But instead of pulling the old one down, they've just left it standing. And at the mercy of the volcano, it was placed there to celebrate. The museum is inside the Oni Oshidashi, which is a lava field created when the volcano erupted spectacularly in 1783. Since this building was closed down 20 years ago, it's been shaken and shattered by rumblings and eruptions from the volcano. The glass is broken, the walls are buckling, and the paint is slowly being stripped from the walls. None of that takes away from its architectural beauty, though. If you're a ghost hunter, you might be particularly interested in the Waverly Hills Sanatorium in Louisville, USA. If the legends are to be believed, it's one of the most haunted places in the whole country. This was an institution built for one reason to contain the spread of tuberculosis and to work on a cure for the devastating illness. Back when it was built, a century ago, there was no cure for the disease, so all that could be done for sufferers was to hide them away in a building like this. The further the disease spread, the more space was required. Eventually, the sanatorium was large enough to house up to 1,000 patients and the brave doctors who tried to treat them. A cure was finally found toward the end of the 1940s, and so by 1961, there was no longer any cause for the sanatorium to be used. It went on to become a nursing home, but it was closed in 1982 amid stories that patients were being mistreated. Ever since then, it's been empty. Well, empty except for all the ghosts anyway. There are two questions you'll find yourself asking when you visit Carhenge in Nebraska. The first? is how was this done? And the second is why. The strange site was created by a conceptual artist named Jim Rinders, who was heavily inspired by the famous historic site of Stonehenge in England. He didn't want to use heavy stones for his sacred circle though, instead he used old and unwanted cars. The result is a site that replicates the layout of Stonehenge in every way, but with steel in place of stone. As an example, in the place where you'll find Stonehenge's heel stone, at Carhenge, you'll find a 1962 Cadillac. Residents of the small town of Alliance, which is where Carhenge was created, were initially skeptical about their new artistic feature. Over time, they've grown to love it, and the tourism industry which has grown up around it. The strange sight of the abandoned Atlas hovercraft in Florida can be a little unsettling if you don't know the story. What's this massive wrecked hovercraft doing here? Was it washed up in a storm and then left to rot? Actually, no. It's just a commercial venture that went badly wrong. This hovercraft and others like it were originally intended to become a new transport solution for the St. Johns River area, welcoming thousands of passengers each year for a luxury cruise. Millions of dollars were sunk into the project, which began in 2005. Work was slow, but steady. And in 2008, the website of the company behind the creation of the hovercraft signaled their intention to go live with the new service the following year. That was the last anybody heard of the project. The website was quietly taken down, and the unfinished 125-foot-long hovercraft shell was left standing in Reynolds Field, where it's been ever since. It seems that the business behind Atlas simply ran out of money and had to give up on their dream. Out in the waters of the Philippines, you'll find Fort Drum, an enormous concrete fortress that's been deliberately designed to resemble a battleship. This is one ship that's never going to sail anywhere. 
Fort Drum's real name is El Fraile Island. It was created to defend the Manila Bay Area in the immediate aftermath of the Spanish-American War. It started with one single rock, upon which concrete was lumped and shaped into the formation we see today. The idea was that distant ships would be put off approaching the area by the sight of what they would presume was a huge defensive vessel, and even if they got close, they'd be pounded by the artificial island's artillery. It's been abandoned since the end of the Second World War, when it was covered in gasoline and then set on fire as the Japanese forces who captured it went into retreat, adopting a scorched earth policy as they left. Dreamers Gate in Australia is one man's artistic vision, and it's not a vision the local planning authorities have ever agreed with. Every sculpture you see here was carved by the gifted hands of Tony Fantastis, who intended them to be a tribute to his father, who once owned the land where the installation is based in the tiny town of Collector. The gate itself, which is the centerpiece of all the sculptures here, is 22 feet high and 75 feet long and leads out to unspoiled, sun-bleached prairie land. Fantastis views his creations as a celebration of life, but there are some who find it a little morbid to look at. The local council is among them. They think the structures are a structurally unstable eyesore and have been trying to force Tony to pull them down since 1999. The artist has never relented, and so they're still standing, abandoned, and stuck in limbo. Shortly after the turn of the century, there were plans to turn an area of the Sinai Peninsula into Egypt's answer to Dubai, an opulent tourist hotspot full of all-star attractions and five-star hotels. Construction work started in 2012, and many pioneering and distinctive styles of architecture were used to build the framework of these hotels of the future. Unfortunately, the visionary builders never got to complete their work. Beginning in 2005, Egypt began to suffer from prolonged periods of civil unrest, coupled with terrorist activity in the areas around the Sinai Desert. That slowed down the building projects, and the delays cost money. Ultimately, both the funds to complete the work and the desire to carry on disappeared, and that's left nothing behind but the half-finished shells of these hotels standing empty on the sand. They look almost like ancient ruins, but they're modern monuments instead. They're a little bit like the ghosts of buildings that never were. Hall's Tower is a familiar sight to American citizens who drive down I-81 in Pennsylvania, but very few of them know the story behind the decrepit building that looms ominously out of the wasteland, seemingly in danger of collapsing at any given moment. Some of the locals claim a spirit lives at the very top of the tower, but that's just a story the adults tell to stop the children from playing there. The reality is this is a folly, a doomed dream home project started by a man named John Hall in 1981 who stole money from his own company to finance the building work. Even as a thief, he couldn't quite put together sufficient funds to have the work completed. And so it was left to languish in a semi-completed state and then started falling apart. Hall eventually went bankrupt in 1993, but before the property and the land could be sold, as part of his bankruptcy settlement, it mysteriously caught fire. It was always suspected, but never proven, that Hall started the fire himself. For a town that's so small, Uterbog in Germany has had quite a storied military history. Only around 15,000 people live there, but it was once a strategically important garrison town. The Nazis stationed thousands of soldiers there during the Second World War, but after the war was over, it became the temporary home of thousands of Soviet Union soldiers instead. All those years of making fighting forces welcome came to an end in 1994 when the last soldiers left town. That's left all of their infrastructure, including a military airport, to decay in the open air. The entire Soviet Air Force Elite Academy was once stationed here, which explains the presence of all the empty hangars. At the absolute peak of its operational time, 30,000 troops lived together in these buildings. There's very little trace of their presence left here now, 
although the occasional mural of Moscow and Berlin gives a clue as to the identity of the occupants of long ago. Monastery Antoinette in Belgium is trapped in a permanent state of half-splendor and half-squalor. It stood empty since 2008, and nature is slowly beginning to stake its claim to the site, but it can't quite wipe out the beauty of what came before it. In some places, it even enhances that beauty, like the way the multicolored leaves and vines have grown up the walls and across the courtyards in the time since its closure. The original building was commissioned and paid for by the Count of Levignon in 1786, although it was amended and refined several times after that. Much of the structure that exists there now dates back to 1904. From 1927 onward, it was inhabited by Benedictine monks, hence being called a monastery. But it was briefly occupied by Nazi forces during the 1940s. The Sisters of St. Augustine reclaimed the building when the Nazis left and ran it as a rest home. Since 2017, there have allegedly been plans to convert this beautiful old building into apartments, although there's no sign of the work starting. What's worse than being in prison? Well, how about being in a prison that's underwater? Remove prison in Estonia matches that description, but thankfully it wasn't under the waves when prisoners called it home. That would have been impractical. The prison was built in this location by the Soviet Union during the 1940s because it was conveniently close to a limestone quarry. The prisoners were used as free labor and spent their days toiling in the quarry to extract whatever they could. After 1991, though, when Estonia became an independent nation, it was decided that what went on at Ramu amounted to cruel and unusual punishment, and the prison was closed. With nobody left to maintain it, groundwater rapidly flooded the site and partially submerged it. It's now a popular tourist spot for divers who have reported that some of the mining equipment that was used here is still in place below the waterline. You can even swim through some of the old cells if the mood strikes you. Of all of the places that can become abandoned, you hate to see it happen to amusement parks more than almost anything else. These are places where families should be coming together and having fun. Dottie Park was actually the first ever private amusement park in the whole of Belgium. But being the first didn't mean it got any special treatment. And its rides will never work again. It started out as a playground in 1950 for children of the local church school, but by the end of the decade had expanded to include fairground rides and welcomed tourists from all over the country. At its busiest, more than one million people came to visit it each year. Unfortunately, the money that came with the tourists wasn't spent on maintenance, and the park started to become badly run down in the late 1990s. A child was seriously injured on a ride in 2000, and two years later, the park was shut down for what was supposed to be a period of renovation. The renovations never began, and the park has never opened its doors since. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.